I'll go ahead and turn the recording on. Um, if you would like captions for today's call, there is a button down at the bottom of the menu um, for the Zoom call, and you can click that show captions button to have captions for your Zoom call. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Kathy. Kathy, feel free to start whenever you're ready. Okay. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon and welcome. We're, fall semester is upon us. So it's good to see so many of you here on Zoom. I guess um, since you're here on Zoom, you, you weren't able to make it to uh, last week's meeting in person, which is fine. Uh, we want to offer that flexibility for you. Some of you are far away from us. So it's great that you can join us uh, over Zoom. So I'm Kathy Allen, Vice President for Instruction here at the college. And I wanted to just give a couple of words of welcome in terms of a thank you. Thank you for your commitment to teaching here at Blue Ridge. And then also a, a thank you for, for your work with the students all during the semester. I know some of it, especially um, online, it's hard to connect with the students sometime and it takes some great effort. So thank you for that. And my goal here at Blue Ridge is to give every instructor all the support and resources that you need to succeed. And so that's really important to me. And I want you to know that you're not alone in this endeavor. I have actually been an adjunct at another community college in the system for a number of years, for over 15 years. And I know what it's like to have a question and be like, oh no, like who, who do I reach out to to find this out and not know and have to figure it out on my own. And that is not the experience I want you to have here. I want you to have, to have a go-to person to have all the resources that you need and, and a go-to person to ask questions when you need to. So hopefully you've met and are in communication with your chair or dean or coordinator. And if not, uh, the director of teaching and learning, Farah Parlier, she can help you connect. Um, I can help you connect. Hopefully you all have my email. Last Thursday, you got, uh, hopefully you got an email from me and it contains the Office for Instruction newsletter. So that newsletter is full of important information. It has a lot of links in there. And um, so please take time to read that. And then that way you have, you have my email address now since you got that email, feel free to email back. If you're on campus here in Henderson, uh, Hendersonville and Flat Rock campus, feel free to come by anytime. My door is open. So you have some terrific resources and I, I appreciate you taking the time over this hour to take advantage of that. So for those of you, I know some of you are on the Zoom because you're not local, but if you happen to be local to the area and you have two hours of time tomorrow between one and three, we are having a poverty simulation here and I'm gonna put the link in the chat so this time will be well worth it if you can if you can come you can get away and you can come it's a powerful experience it's built, uh, facilitated by the north carolina community college action association and it's funded by blue ridge's educational foundation so it, it's intended to increase our awareness of the un and understanding of all the challenges that our students face who could be living in poverty things that we're not necessarily used to. So if you can do that, I'm going to put that, uh, I'm going to put the link in the chat. Uh, if you can join us tomorrow from one to three, I'm just going to put a plug in. We really need people to come invite your family and friends. Uh, this is not only open to the Blue Ridge community, but it's open to the community at large. So after that plug, um, I'm going to stick around for a little bit in case there's any questions that come up and just listen to the conversation. But I mostly just wanted to welcome you and thank you, especially for your commitment and for teaching for us. And I hope you have a wonderful semester and I hope to hear from each one of you soon. Thank you so much, Kathy. We really appreciate your um, welcome. And more importantly, we appreciate your leadership and your support of all of the faculty here at the college. 
um, adjunct and full-time faculty. Teaching and learning is part of the division of instruction. And so we, uh, we do everything we can to support the initiatives uh, for both curriculum and continuing education uh, to help our community meet its goals in providing high quality education to prepare people for the workforce and for transfer. We'll go ahead and get started. Thanks for putting that link. Uh, you can see that link in the chat and I'll be monitoring the chat throughout um, throughout our session. So if you've got questions, you can message everybody in the chat. You can also change that to button in the chat to just a specific person and have um, discussion that way if you'd like as well. I'm gonna share my screen and invite you to jump into uh, an interactive experience when I share, you'll see in just a moment. We're gonna do something a little different. This is called a woo clap. And you should be seeing um, an adjunct InfoFest slide. Can I get a thumbs up from some people if you're seeing a slide? Okay, great. So the next thing you're gonna see is how you get to be a part of this. If you have a QR reader on your phone, you can actually participate on your phone and you don't have to leave the Zoom call or do anything fancy with tabs. If you wanna create a new tab on your computer, you can go to a new tab and you can go to wooclap.com and enter that event code. You can text, there's three ways to join. And I'm gonna leave this up for a minute and give a plug for WooClap. If you are teaching blended or hybrid courses, in other words, you have time with students in a classroom space, WooClap is a great way to get students to interact. You can quiz students, you can poll students, they can do activities through the WooClap so that you can assess what they're learning in real time. A lot of students are used to having a device in their hand and so they're pretty comfortable doing that. If you teach online um, through synchronous meetings, maybe you have your students meet once a week or once every couple of weeks to have live meetings, you can certainly use it the way we're using it tonight. And WooClap can also be used to quiz students asynchronously. I can't say it's the most effective when used asynchronously, like on their own time, but it is possible to do it that way too. I can look at the bottom of the screen and I can see that 16 of you have already joined our WooClap. When we get to questions, there'll be another invitation to participate. So I'm gonna go ahead and move forward so we can get started with our agenda. Um, and we'll give you a chance to answer a question right away. My question for you, and this should come up on your screen, what delivery modes are you teaching in this fall? Are you teaching blended, hybrid, online? And you can click more than one answer. So go ahead and start replying. Let's see how the votes are coming in. Ooh, look at that. So we have a lot of online instruction happening. We've got some hybrid. What do you want me to put, Sarah? I'm clinical. I would say you are blended because they're going to potentially, I mean, yeah, clinicals are blended. Okay. Because they turn stuff in online sometimes, don't they, Ronnie? No, it's, it's all <clears throat> direct patient care at the bedside. Right. Well, thank you for, our, for yeah, I could probably have given that other option of traditional then for those clinical classes. So this is kind of a fun way as you're seeing this, you're seeing the results, you can notice how this might, I want you to think about how you could maybe use this in your classes. What I like about it is it's a great way to anonymously ask students questions so they can save face, but still give their honest opinion or maybe their honest knowledge of something and you find out, are they getting it? Are they not getting it? Or in this case, who, who are we working with here? Any of you use WooClap before? Definitely encourage you to, to think about it. It's something you can um, get to from my courses and our teaching and learning folks would be happy to help you out if you'd like to learn more about it. How long have you been teaching for Blue Ridge? Let's, let's find this out. How many semesters in are we? I almost gave the option, I can't remember that so many. <laughs> some of you would probably have that answer. I'm seeing some nods. We're at about halfway. You can kind of, again, you can see where we are in terms of our folks. We've got, we've got at, at least, let's see. One newbie, I don't know if our newbie wants to name themselves. Carol, I'm so glad you're here. And are you teaching at TCC for us, Carol? Yeah, What? I'm not remembering what your subject area is. You wanna take yourself off mute and say hi? Yeah. 
that. There you are. I should be off mute now. Yeah, right. I'm I'm teaching biology up at TCC campus. I'm wow. not I'm new new to Blue Ridge, but I'm not new to teaching. I've been a professor at Louisiana for 30 years, and then Santa Rosa Junior College, and now I'm here. <laughs> We love our experienced adjuncts. Thank you so much for joining the Blue Ridge team. We're excited, oh, I'm excited to have you. about it. Yeah, that's great. That's great. What I love about our adjunct faculty is they bring in their experience either from their prior teaching experience, their industry experience, their life experience, and they choose to give part of their time, part of their energy to our students. And I, you know, I talk to so many adjuncts who say it's the, you know, the best part of their week is being with our students or the best part of their week is reading what their students are writing about when they're completing their assignments. So thank you for joining us. Um, and we do, you'll notice in the, in the results, Carol, that you're joining a group of folks who have decided to come back. So it must not be that bad, right? <laughs> we have five folks on this call who have voted that they have been teaching here for, you know, what's the equivalent of four years. So we haven't scared them off. <laughs> Yeah, it's great to have all of you. Well, a real quick plug for my team. Again, I am Sarah. I'm the director for teaching and learning, and I can't do what I do without my folks. So I have a team of uh, LMS administrators. So Leah is the administrator over my courses. When you send an email to help desk, it gets routed to her, and she's the one helping you fix most of your my courses issues. Remember that she's one person. Uh, and then we also have Kevin and Jamie. Kevin and Jamie are instructional designers and they do a lot with course development, one-on-one -on -one instruction and assistance. They do consultations um, and they are great at helping out in the LMS as well. They just don't have all the keys to the kingdom. So um, we all kind of work together and I really appreciate their support and they, they're the ones who actually make things happen here. So thank you so much to our team. Kathy's already given her welcome and um, she's sticking on the call. So Kathy, do you think of anything else you want to pop in with? No, not right now. Just okay. if anybody has any questions, I'll stick around for a little bit. Awesome. Well, then here's what's happening next. We're going to move in after our opening session. We're going to move into instructor presence in our course. Jennifer Treadway. Jennifer is on the, on the call. And you may see her if you've got your gallery view up. She's, wait, she's next to Kathy in my screen. There she is. She's waving away. And then Jamie Warren, our instructional designer, is going to be on the call to talk about my courses. He's going to go over a few things, just a few things. Um, my course is new and improved. And then we, we're hopefully going to have time to wrap up. So let's get into our first um, student services, college services topic, and that is police and public safety. Now, I'm looking for Chris on the call, and I'm not seeing him right this second. Has Chief White joined us, and I'm just not seeing him? Let's see. He may have gotten pulled away. Let me just take a moment and and walk you through um, Chief White's content. You know, our police department is first and foremost here to serve, and so I'm sure he's serving right now. Um, I want to remind everybody, if you are on campus and there is an emergency, please call 911. That is your first number. You do not need to worry about calling any offices here. Any 911 call will also get routed to our response team here. If it's a non-emergency call, you can call the HCC and TCC numbers that you see there on the screen. We invite you to sign up for Blue Ridge Alert. Even if you're teaching online, I think it's good to know what's happening on campus. Blue Ridge Alert will let you know when there are emergencies on campus or when there are school closures. If you are an online instructor and you're teaching uh, during a school closure, you may choose to go ahead and continue with your teaching schedule and having assignments due. Uh, for online classes, that is a little bit different. But if you're teaching a hybrid course or a blended course, certainly you'll want to know when classes are closed. And that Blue Ridge Alert is the quickest way to find out all college uh, urgent information. I also want to invite you to please share the following video with your students. You can put this in your course shell and ask students to watch it. You could you can also show it to your students if you are sitting if you are in a classroom space with students. I will tell you that the run hide fight video if you have not watched it can be a very sensitive uh, challenging video for some of our viewers and so I encourage you to let students know that it's difficult to watch or invite them to leave the room if they feel uncomfortable watching it. 
The most important thing is that our students understand the concepts of run, hide, fight. So if a student is unfamiliar with run, hide, fight, there's also text on the police page that walks them through those steps. Um, and again, feel free to include that link. You can get to that link from this PowerPoint, which I'm gonna be sharing with all of you after today's call. You can also get to it from the Police and Public Safety website. Any questions? Brian, I, I'm seeing, I think that's Brian. I'm seeing a good question about um, Blue Ridge Alert. If you've signed up for Blue Ridge Alert, you are good. You don't have to sign up every year. Great question. Okay. I also want to point out that if you are teaching in a Blue Ridge classroom on any campus, you have two keys that you can click on your keyboard at the same time, F9 and F11, and those are your emergency keys if you're not able to make a phone call out. So in the case of an emergency within your classroom, if you need to get attention very quickly, you can hit those two keys at the same time, and that will trigger an emergency response to that place. Now, the side effect of that is that you may, at some point in time, go to your classroom to teach and be prompted to complete a test where it's going to tell you to press those two keys, like something's going to show up on the screen and say, hey, do this. Please follow the directions. It's just calibrating to make sure that it still knows where that computer is sitting. So please do that test if it comes up when you're in that classroom. In the case of a medical emergency, please remember to do your best to stay calm. Remember, we are the teachers in the classroom, and so whatever we can do to create calm for the rest of our students is helpful. There is a desktop icon for Blue Ridge Alert that you can get the attention, or again, just calling 911 is probably your best bet. And then a reminder that we are not expected to perform medical training that we are not equipped to provide. So please do not feel responsible for giving medical uh, response if you are not a trained medical professional. Okay, you got a quiz question now. Chief White wanted to see what you remember. So Blue Ridge Alert will keep you updated about what? if y'all were paying attention. You can answer in the Woo Club. You can also answer in the chat. Okay, we're over half. I'm going to go ahead and see. Oh, look at that. Despite the typo, you guys still got it. Nice work. So yes, again, encourage y'all to sign up for Blue Ridge Alert. I'm next going to turn this over to Kirsten. Kirsten Bunch is our Vice President for Student Services, and she's going to talk with you all about a number of topics. And Kirsten, if it's okay, I'll drive for you. Does that work for you? Yeah, that'd be great, Sarah. Thank you. So hello, everybody. Um, nice to see you online. I see some familiar faces and new faces, so good to see everyone. A um, few things that I'm going to highlight with you all, um, and I'm actually, since I don't have the the presentation in front of me, I'm going to write down these bullet points so I don't get really excited and forget to, to mention something. Um, so, all right. I've got slides for all of them too, Kirsten. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to make sure that I highlighted everything and didn't miss anything. Thank you, Sarah. Okay, so we're ready to go to the next slide. So the first one that I'll highlight is our watermark. So it used to be called the Viso. So we laugh and say, like the artist formerly known as print. So if somebody says a visa or a watermark, we do sometimes um, use those terms interchangeably. So what that is, is a retention software that we have available where faculty are able to enter information in there. You're able to put in alerts. Um, if you've reached out to a student, you've tried to connect with them a couple of times, they're not responding to you and you'd like to put in an alert. If it's absences, you can do that. If somebody is struggling with um, completing their coursework successfully and you've made several attempts to refer them to Student Success Center and that's not happening or it's not being a successful support, then you can do an alert. So there's numerous ways you can do those alerts. And so there is going to be a Viso watermark training as the semester begins. Laura Simmons, our Director of Enrollment Management, is that software owner. And she'll be offering those. So just watch your inbox for the opportunities to participate in that. She usually does. I think most of those are online to try to be conducive to schedules and that sort of thing. So 
watch for more information there. Um, just the last little bullet point here on this slide, you know, just the reminders of some of the services we have in student services. If you're a returning face or if you're a newer face, please know that we have lots of supports in student services. I think a lot of times um, in the in the classroom, faculty are able to hear from students and you all hear directly sometimes what those concerns are, what the woes are the students are experiencing. So if they're not coming to class and then they finally connect with you and let you know that they're having child care situations or they're taking care of a parent or whatever that might be. Um, typically, there might be something in student services that we can do to connect them with a community resource or connect them with funds available potentially for child care or emergencies where we can try to help support that student and retain them as they're um, here as a student. So just caveats to remind you of, of those items. Okay. Next, I'll highlight the behavioral assessment team. So I am the chair of the behavioral assessment team. And that's just an opportunity to um, submit information to a group that's here on campus. So I chair it, but it's compiled of folks from our VA services. There's faculty, um, other staff members, and the police chief are all a part of this group. And so what we do is vet these reports that come in. Um, sometimes they end up being a conduct manner. Sometimes it's just an FYI. Sometimes we're able to learn of um, situations our students are going through to help connect them with a community support. Um, some examples there on the, the slide to let you know when you can do um, a behavioral assessment report, if it's threatening behavior in the classroom or threatening writings or something that seems really concerning. Um, if you ever have any questions, I always let folks know, please call me, reach out to me. I'm happy to talk with you about any situation, but Basically, if your gut's kind of telling you, I think I might should report this, I'm going to ask if I should, my response is going to be, let's go ahead and report it. So the neat thing about our software is that we'll behind the scenes connect all of those different reports for me so I can see if there's any reoccurring behavioral patterns or reoccurring reports on students that we, we need to take action on and be aware of. So please, anytime something's going on, um, let us know and keep us in the loop. Um, another thing I kind of highlighted um, with the in-person group, if there's ever any um, situations going on in the classroom and you're just not sure how to address it, if it's maybe a conduct um, behavioral kind of issue, please let me know. I'm happy to talk with you about that. What you don't want to happen is for a student to, to be kind of like a toddler where they're allowed to get away with bad behavior over and over and over. And then eventually as a faculty member, you've had all that you can take and you've tried all of the things you need to try. And then you fill out a report and I call the student in for a conduct meeting. And then they're very shocked that they've been allowed to have this behavior for so long. And now all of a sudden we're addressing it. So if you have questions, please let me help you address that from the get go and set just a really good healthy tone with that student to make sure that, that they're behaving and not disrupting the learning environment for others in the class. Okay, so here's um, I love that woo clap. That's the funniest little word to me. Um, but here's a question for you guys. So if the parent of a student wants to get an update on the student's grade, what should they do? So the first option is call the instructor of the course. So call you guys and say, hey, how's Sally doing in class? Should they call the registrar's office and ask the question? Should they call the president's office and ask the question? Or should they ask the student how they're doing in class? And all these are options because they've all happened before. I didn't make any of those up. <laughs> okay, Sarah, how many have we got? Okay, oh, look at that. We are on the right track, folks. So definitely um, with FERPA, one thing I want to highlight with you all, um, we do have students that are minors in the class, but we are a college campus. So in post-secondary education, we do expect the college student to be their own advocate. So should they have questions about their grade, they should be the one to connect with the instructor. If the parents have questions, if a parent contacts you, you can respectfully let them know that they need to talk with their student. And we have let all of our students know that have attended the Career and College Promise Boot Camp. Typically, we tend to see this with our high schoolers more than anything. Although I will say, years ago when I was in the registrar's office, I talked to a mother almost every day straight for two weeks, and they broke the record. Whenever her son finally applied, he was 54 years old. 
So that was the record of the age of the student that I was talking with the parent um, about the admissions process. But just to highlight again, uh, you know, connecting with the students. If the student um, wants to meet with you and the parent is adamant about being there in that space as well, if the student agrees to that, you can certainly do that. One thing I just caution folks is if um, if mom and the student or dad and the student are sitting in the room with you and the parents may be the one sending the questions your direction, then I would just clarify with the student, would you like for me to answer that question? Because sometimes this will surprise you all, but what we may find occasionally is the story that was told at home versus the story that you may as the faculty member tell in front of mom and dad tend to be a little different. And so that sometimes comes out in these meetings when those happen on campus. Um, just to highlight on our slide there, we've got a list of what's directory information. And so that's also highlighted to our students in our catalog and on the website. So legally directory information can be released about students. And so kind of an example that I give about that, um, if, a, if a local car dealership were to call and say, we're having a real big sale on the used Buicks and we want to tell all your students about this great opportunity, um, I'm not going to give them the list of our currently enrolled students and their contact information. Um, so an example of when we might share that out would be if Western Carolina were to contact us and say, we're adding a new program to our business department and we'd like to let all of the business graduates for, for the past two years know of this educational opportunity. In that case, we may share that that um, directory information so they can let them know of that opportunity. So kind of using our, our gut instinct if folks have the educational interest in mind um, to share that information. So I just kind of went through those expectations there, the exceptions. Um, so I think I shared that too. We, we don't give the grades over the telephone, always kind of double check with the student at hand and make sure that they're okay sharing information with that third party being in the room. Um, and then they, okay, with Title IX, here we go. So if students um, share with you or share through a writing assignment or some kind of a class assignment that they have been subject to some kind of um, sexual abuse, discrimination, something like that here on campus, then, then we are mandatory reporters. And so I would say, let me know if you will, please, if it involves a student and I will be the one that can reach out to the student and walk them through that process. Um, sometimes we find that it's a, an event that happened in their past 10, 15 years ago, and they're just writing about that and sharing that as part of the healing process. And there's nothing um, for me at that point to take action on because it's not a, a current event that's happening now. Um, occasionally it is something that's happening in the present and I can walk the student through what their options are in reporting and if they would like to share with campus police to file reports and get advice there then I will pull them into the loop as well. But just the key takeaway would be if a student reports anything to you to please share that and that can be shared through a Maxient report, and that is um, on the SharePoint. I think Sarah may be highlighting that later, where all of the college forms are located. And, and there was a direct link there. Okay, so um, last thing I'll highlight, we have a new disability services coordinator. She started today. I was so happy to see her on campus. It's been a couple of weeks since we've had somebody in that role, so we really needed to get somebody here and in place to be able to serve our students. So she is feverishly meeting with students right now. So that's why she's not joining us on screen, but just wanted to highlight that and share her information. Her name is Carolyn Levine and there's her email address. So um, one thing that can be different for our students, if they say to you, well, in high school, I had a 504 plan and they had accommodations that is a little different in post-secondary, what the law requires for us to have as far as documentation and how those um, services are provided to the student. And so should you have any student questions, please direct those to Carolyn and she'll be glad to connect with the student and, and reach out to them and get them an accommodation plan set up if need be. And if you are teaching somebody who has an accommodation plan, you'll be receiving those either from Carolyn or the student or potentially both very soon. I know that she is working on those um, again today and tomorrow as well amongst um, between those student meetings. So just wanted to highlight her information. So Sarah, I want to open it up for just a second and see if there are any questions for me before I, I leave your Zoom call. 
And feel free to put questions in the chat as well. And if you think of questions and you share them in the chat later, I'll pass them along to Kirsten and she can get back to you. Okay, well, thank you all for your time. I appreciate the opportunity to share with you. I know it's kind of dry, heavy material, but it needs to be shared. So just wanted to put that information out there. Um, please don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions or if I can be a resource for you all here on campus, happy to do that. So hope you all have a great semester. Kirsten, I'm going to put your email in the chat as well. Fantastic. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, guys. And just a quick note um, before we move to Anthony talking about the library, this link here, I will share that when I send this out to all of you as a PDF, I'll share that link separately in the body of the email because it's nice to just be able to go right to that link. Okay. All right. Time for Anthony talking about the library. Yay, what you got for us? Can everybody hear me? I sound all right. Okay. Cool. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome. Um, it's great to see y'all here. Uh, new faces, returning faces. Um, my name is Anthony Baltiero. I'm the Director of Library Services here. Just really quickly, I want to introduce my team. Uh, these are the people you're going to end up working with when you come to the library or your students uh, online. Julia Haverstock, she's our Electronic Resources Librarian. Uh, she's wonderful. She'll do all of the book ordering. So if you have specific books or specific databases that you're interested in, uh, she's going to be the point person and the primary contact for that. This summer, we hired our first archivist, yay. So Rachel Quinn, she is our archivist. We are in the process of building both a physical and a digital archive. It is very tricky. Um, we had no idea what we were doing, but our wonderful archivist is now guiding us in the right direction. And over at, and the three of us were here at the Henderson County campus over at Transylvania County. It's a one person show and it's all Michelle Handy. She is wonderful. She's the librarian and the student success coordinator. So if any of your students are out there, um, you're gonna wanna give them her email. She's a wonderful resource. And you may click the next slide. Oh, we got questions. I added a question, Anthony. All right, all right. so true or false? Only full-time instructors can use library services at Blue Ridge. Do maniacal fingers while we wait. Let's let's see where the group is heading. Ah, oh, they knew. All right. So that is one hundred percent false. Uh, the library is free and open to everyone. So not just you as faculty and our students, but we are a quasi public library as well. So we are open to the community. Um, if you have a heartbeat, we will give you a library card. That's that's pretty much our, our philosophy. Uh, I'm gonna try to be quick. I just wanna talk about some services that we offer to y'all uh, and your students. One of the main things we do is uh, research assistance. So when it comes time for research papers and assignments, please send your students our way. If they're online, you could reach out to uh, any of our email addresses, or if you email library at blueridge.edu, that's gonna get to all of the librarians. Um, you can even set up, we have one-on-one -on -one appointments now. So if you go to the library's website off of our website, you or students, anyone can set up one-on-one -on -one appointments with us. Another wonderful resource, and this is something that I stress for all faculty, but particularly uh, online faculty, are our LibGuides. If you've never used a LibGuide before, it's kind of like a, a bonus website to go along with your course. Uh, we have many of them for individual courses, but we'll have them for uh, just kind of area specific as well. And if, you, if you're starting a course or you're in a course that doesn't have one, reach out to us, we'll build you one. Um, it's something we love doing. We are super nerdy and we love building these lib guides. Uh, we do class visits and tours. Um, that's mostly gonna be if you're on campus, but if you would like uh, to have a librarian pop into one of your online classes, if you've got a synchronous session, reach out to us, let us know. That's something we could definitely do. Uh, if you have any Spanish speakers in your class or if you're teaching an ELA class, something like that, uh, we have books in Spanish. Um, we are trying to beef up that, that section. So we're always willing to take uh, 
requests for those kind of materials. We have a ton of databases. So if you go to our website, scroll down and look at our databases, we have a lot of them. We pay a lot of money for them and they are uh, ridiculously underused. So if you see one that you like and you have no idea how to use it, we could also teach you how to use it. So please reach out to us. We do database and research instruction. Um, something we started last year that I think is a great resource. Again, if your uh, students are on class, but we do try to record them as well so we can provide videos. We have guest speakers and presentations of a uh, wide variety of topics. Um, this past year, it's been mostly horticulture based, but this next coming year, we're gonna be opening it up. Um, yay. So we got a grant last year to build a recording studio. So we built a recording studio in the library. And primarily um, the idea was to use it to record oral history, but we wanna open it up to faculty and students. So um, speech classes, anything that, that needs to be recorded, uh, we can do that. One of the great byproducts is we get to record the audio and video for a lot of our speakers and presentations. So we could provide that to you. We could put them in our wonderful libguides um, and things like that. And you could go on. Ooh, so we started a seed library. This, I'm just throwing this in because it's awesome. Um, we have a, a growing garden, garden group that's here. And actually tomorrow we have a seed saving event in the library, but that kind of built off of this uh, seed library where people can check out seeds, plant them, and at the end of the harvest, bring them back. Um, yeah, I just like throw that out. It's awesome. Photo ID table. So when we were building the archive, we kind of got dumped just thousands of pictures. And the problem is we have no idea who they are. So we set up a photo ID table. So we're encouraging people to come in, um, see if you can identify anyone in the photos. We've been doing it for events, but we're trying to make it a fun thing for classes to come through, teachers. It's just something wonderful that we have. Something else I wanna to mention to y'all being uh, online instructors, we have a computer lab, so students can come in, um, use, use our computers. We have free Wi-Fi throughout the college, but the library is a great place for people to come. We have study rooms. So if your students are looking for somewhere to go, if they don't have you know, reliable internet or computers, they can come to the library. Um, and this is more of our archive gear. So with that grant, we also got some groovy scanners. Um, so if you ever need anything digitized, again, that might be a little more for the on-campus, but if your students need things to be digitized, we have oversized scanners, which is great for um, specific projects, maps, artwork, things like that. Uh, again, I just wanna really throw out there that we are here for y'all. If you can think of anything that we can help, whether it's research, a, a group use for the studio, uh, we wanna start making podcasts. If you have podcast ideas, come in and record some podcasts but we're here to support you and your students. So please reach out to me, any one of my staff. And again, if you email library at blueridge.edu, that's gonna get to all of us. Oh, one more thing, sorry, I'll let you go. We have 24 seven chat service now, which is something new this year. Um, during regular operation hours, one of us will be operating the, the chat. And after hours, it's gonna be a librarian from somewhere else, else in North Carolina, but that's, so if your students are, it's like two in the morning and they need help, we're there. And I will take any questions if there's any questions. And Anthony, I got a question. Yes. Um, I'm the uh, LinkedIn administrator at my college. Uh, and we use LinkedIn here as a supplementary material. So do you guys use LinkedIn if you have a library card at your college? Um, link, I don't think we have anything official through the college with LinkedIn. Um, I know people are, are more than welcome to do it. I know the college itself has a LinkedIn, but as far as connecting it through the library, we, we don't really do anything with that. Okay. I know some call, some some libraries. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We just we just don't have a big enough need for it yet. Maybe. Maybe in the future. Yep. I was just thinking about doing supplementary at Blue Ridge that way. So, okay. Thank you. Thank you. I hear an opportunity, Randy, so we'll talk more. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, for sure. Anthony, thanks so much. Uh, we're going to pop into no. teaching and learning for just a few minutes, and then I want to turn it over to Jennifer, who's going to share with us her thoughts about instructor presence and get us thinking more about that. Um, as a quick reminder, the teaching and learning department provides 
support with your courses, um, your My Courses sites that you have for each of the courses that you teach for curriculum side of the college. We can help you with all the way from starting the design process through revision of something that you've been doing for a while. We provide professional development for all part-time and full-time instructors. That includes you, right? So um, just because you're not a full-time faculty doesn't mean that you're excluded from our professional development series. I know that you get emails from me and those emails contain invitations. Please take us up on some of the ones that sound interesting to you. This is about growing you as a whole person. And so we want you to feel welcome to participate in our professional development. We also have on-demand things. So like this, for example, we're recording it. We'd love you here live, but for folks who can't come to the live session, we still want it available. So when we have recordings, we always send those out too. Uh, I mentioned course development already. You may be asked to do course development and you may be getting paid additionally to do that. And we're part of that process. So we support course development. We also do a lot of support one-on-one. -on -one. We're happy to meet with you individually. Today, Jamie Warren had a couple different consultations with faculty members uh, in the Teaching and Learning Center where he was working with them getting their courses set up. That's what we love most of all is just having those conversations and helping instructors uh, achieve their teaching and learning goals. And we do have a physical space, the Teaching and Learning Center at the HCC campus. And you are always welcome. We do have drop-in hours Monday through Friday, 10 to two. But like I said today, it was open from eight to three o'clock essentially, and we had faculty in there working. That is your space. It's a comfortable space. It's kind of supposed to feel like a coffee shop. We've got snacks. Yeah, Brian, you got a question? Go for it. No, I'm sorry, Dr. Farley. I've got my son bringing my charging cord. <laughs> my laptop's getting ready to go dead. You look so excited. I'm trying to tell him where to plug it in at. Well, now you know I'm watching the screen. So there you go. Um, I'm sorry. So, so yeah, come and visit us in the Teaching and Learning Center. I want to remind you all of what this college might look like and how this college really operates, okay? This college might look like this to you all, right? You may see yourself as part of the picture, but you may see yourself in this one section of the picture, right? We have a large board of trustees and leadership team. We have our vice presidents. We have our deans and chairs, and then we have our faculty. And sometimes it can feel isolating and lonely. Part of our goal, part of our mission, especially within teaching and learning, is to remind you of the reality, which is that you are really at the center of our picture. You are the heart of what needs to happen at this college. Over half of all Blue Ridge students have their very first semester of courses with adjunct instructors. We know that we absolutely rely on our adjunct faculty to teach our courses. It's how a community college can do what it does within a budget. And quite frankly, some of you really like teaching part-time for us because it allows you to do other things with your schedule. Um, and then there, of course, there's always adjuncts who are looking to move into full-time roles and we certainly wanna support you with that as well. What I want you to take away from this image and from tonight is that we are all here to support you. You've heard from a lot of folks tonight and I hope you continue to hear that we want to be available to you when you have questions, when you need assistance, when you just wanna come in and check in with us. So please know that you are at the center of our picture and we're here for you. I'm gonna give you some links later, but for now, I wanna turn it over to Jennifer Treadway and she's gonna to talk to us a little bit about um, instructor presence. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so that if Jennifer wants to share her, she can. And I'm gonna put myself on mute, which doesn't happen very often. You got yeah. it, there you go. Remember back when we all knew how to do, do Zoom, it was like, second or the, the the it's just how we lived our lives yeah but that that was like two years ago so I don't remember how to do zoom anymore um but we'll see if this happens so if you had come with us to the live session we would have um plied you with food specifically a lot of pasta so if you're not getting these um these food references just know that I was really rocking the theme OK, so I just need to make sure that, you know, you will appreciate that I know how to land a theme. So everything's going to be pasta related, as it always is in my life, just in general. So today we're going to talk about instructor presence in your course, and I've set it up like a recipe. And let's see if we know how to move forward to another slide. Ah, look, there's me cooking. So today we're going to make a gluten-free instructor presence in the course. The technique is a conglomeration of methods gleaned after a wonderful summer backpacking through Italy, as all recipes are. 
They are only developed after you have spent a summer backpacking through Italy. So the vision for Instructor Presence, and it can, it can be created in many different ways. The way that I do Instructor Presence could very well be different from the way that you do Instructor Presence, and that's awesome. Um, the possibilities are endless. <laughs> if you are not enjoying that, then you might just want to go ahead and put me on mute for a little bit because, man, I've got puns. I have got me some puns. So I'm just going to include some ideas that maybe you want to think about while you're working on developing your course and what you're working on for the rest of the semester. So hopefully the ideas that we're going to present to you today can become part of your daily routine. Routine. So here are, thank you, Brian. So here are the some ingredients that you might want to use when thinking about putting together your dish of instructor presence. So you want to smile when possible, especially if you have a beautiful smile like me. <laughs> Eye contact. And this one can be a little complicated if you're teaching online, if you're making videos, if you're doing synchronous or asynchronous. So I also teach theater and I teach acting for the camera. And one thing that I learned in these Zoom years is when students are appearing to me and I want to talk to them via the computer, I want to look at their faces. So this is what it looks like to students because I'm looking at their faces as they appear on my screen. Now, when I look at their faces, what you, the student then gets is a really great view of my gray hair, which if that's what you want to highlight, then I support you. But the best way to try to maintain eye contact through this imperfect meme means is to look directly into the camera. It means that I might not be able to look at your face as much as I would like to, your beautiful, beautiful faces. But it means that the students are sensing a little bit more connection with me because it looks like I'm looking at them. So just consider that if you're making videos or if you are doing some syn synchronous things, even if you're doing just a Zoom with a student one-on-one, -on -one, Try to, whenever possible, to spend as much time looking right into that little camera eye. It'll foster a better connection for them. Get to know your students, show an interest in them, and let students get to know you as a tortellini, awesome person, not just an instructor. Students like making those connections. And I think that there have been a plethora of studies that have shown when students start making those connections, they're more likely to persist. And so in my classes, I try to make that one of the, the biggies is that we're we're making these bonds, which make it a little bit easier sometimes for students to stay. Communication. So you wanna have frequent, but not too frequent communication. I'm an over communicator. If you're one of the adjuncts that are working with me, then you probably already know that about me because I think I've sent you 37 emails just in the last week and there's more to come. Um, so I'm I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to get better. And, and every one of my emails could be a novel because I just go on and on and on and on and on, kind of like I'm doing in this presentation. But don't be like me. Be better. Be concise, but also do communicate frequently. Uh, I think that at least once a week is pretty important for course announcements. And I want to make sure that you've got those course announcements day one. You'll get those overachieving students that 1201 on Thursday are going to be logging into the course and they're going to be like, well, what am I doing? Where, where, what are we doing? Um, so if you can get a course announcement to them on that first day, it usually makes those high achieving students feel a little bit more comfortable. And it looks like in what I'm looking at, the bottom part was cut off, but it does say feedback to the whole class as well as detailed individual feedback. That's another great way of communicating with your students and students can communicate with each other. Early and frequent participation in discussion forums. And if you could see, look for other ways that students can interact with you and with their fellow students. And just a couple more thoughts. Uh, you definitely want to log into your course frequently. Uh, daily, if possible. I try not to do much work on Saturday and Sunday if I can help it. But I do try to tr kind of live in those courses as much as I can Monday through Friday. You want to be on time to class, uh, posting work, returning assignments, responding to students' questions, etc. And you want to be accessible. You want to make sure that students know how and when to contact you because that's totally awesome. 
ต้องสมัคร But you also want to have boundaries. So I'm a recovering boundaryless person, where uh, I would respond to students' emails. I'd wake up, you know, in the middle of the night to get a drink of water. It's four in the morning. Oh, there's an email from a student. I've got to respond to them right now. That is not sustainable. Maybe 23 years ago when I started here at Blue Ridge and I was young and fresh faced, but now that I am no longer 23 years old or young or fresh faced, I can't. I can't keep that up. So. Be accessible, but not too accessible. Set boundaries for students and for yourself. You shouldn't be available all the time. If we're trying to teach students life skills, I think one of those life skills is you need to know when to contact people when they're available. You know, if they go to their job and they're emailing their job at four o'clock in the morning and they're getting irate when they don't get a response within 15 minutes, that's not going to work out for them. So teaching them about boundaries, I think, is not only preparing them for the real world, but it's really good modeling. To make this go, this whole boundary idea go more smoothly, clearly communicate to students how and when you plan to be present. So I try to let students know right off the get-go. So I have one particular day that is my grading day, and I spend all that day grading. I personally do accept late work, but I make it very clear to students, if they read the course announcements and the syllabus, that if you turn in late work, it goes to the bottom of my grading stack. I'll get to it when I get to it. And that's the trade-off. I'll accept the late work, but you're going to get graded when I can get around to it. So I haven't had a lot of really irate emails since I've tried to make that super clear to my students. Include response time and then follow through. I want to respond within 24 hours unless it's the weekend or holiday and then it's 48. Usually still try to get back to them before then because some students start to freak out. Um... And I get that. So I try to get back to them when I can, but definitely I try to do the 24. Um, and that last one, I hope you can see it. Be stroganoff to set boundaries and stick to them. Come on, that one was good. In terms of content and the content for your course, make sure that your content is updated. I was just telling someone a couple of days ago that I had a link in my course and I check all my links and make sure they're all good, but somehow that one slipped through the cracks. And that link went to nowhere. I looked back into last semester's course. It went to nowhere then too. And no student notified me. <laughs> Nobody said a word. So do go through and check those links and make sure that you're good. Um, not just for like, you know, making sure that your course content is updated in terms of new scholarship, et cetera, but make sure everything's working the way that it's supposed to be working. Uh, use multiple methods to present the material and assess the learning. Um, I am a budding online instructor. I hadn't done a lot of online instructing before the pandemic. Uh, so it's been a, a steep learning curve for me, but we have so many tools uh, at our fingertips now that we can do multiple modalities in learning uh, and teaching and assessing. And I find that it tends to capture students better uh, that who might have proclivities to be better at certain things than others, kind of like me. Uh, and so if I can use different ways to assess, that tends to help out our students. Also consider breaking long lectures into positively amazing mini lectures. Nobody wants to hear Jennifer Treadway drone on for 10 minutes. And so I try to not whenever I can help it. So feel free to contact me. Uh, some of you, I am working with you as your chair. Uh, others of you, please still contact me whenever you feel like it, just to say, hey, and don't be Alfredo, contact me for any reason. Okay. Okay. So, so there's just one more. All right. Are you ready for this one? Thank you. The pesto's yet to come. Yeah, that's a mic drop. Thanks, everybody. It's been fun spending time with you. Let me know if you need anything. She is a winner on the theme. Absolutely. High five. Ooh. Yeah. Bam. <laughs> nice work, Jennifer. Jamie, I'm sorry. You're going to have to follow Jennifer's puns. You probably can't take her punishment. Ah. Well, we call them dad jokes. Ah. Uh, we'll roll into you when you're ready. Okay. All righty. Good. Uh, well, that certainly that is uh, hard to follow and I'm very hungry now. So thanks for all that. Um, luckily, we're not too far away from dinner. Uh, I'm going to get my get my screen shared.
Now just bear with me for a second. Okay, so is everyone seeing the Canva uh, or uh, my courses uh, slide there? Um, so <clears throat> uh, I've got a lot to cover, uh, actually two presentations. Um, so I'm gonna kind of go through some things. Uh, this, some of this stuff may be very old hat for you uh, that have been here for a couple of semesters. Um, maybe it will serve as a refresher. Uh, but I'll kind of go through things fairly rapidly, uh, but just remember, um, everything's fine. Don't panic uh, for any fans of the good place out there. Um, so uh, I'm just going to go through kind of how to navigate the, the LMS and to kind of go through an uh, introduction to how to how to get through um, the dashboard, how to add core content, uh, collaboration, communication tools. Uh, and assessments and grading and tracking student progress. And then I will kind of touch on some of the new features and uh, some of the services we offer in teaching and learning. <clears throat> um, so first of all, let's, I want to just kind of give, give you a, a, a background of what we're using here as a learning management system at Blue Ridge. Uh, it's a it's kind of a combination of several things. Uh, what we know as my courses is actually two different services and platforms highlighted into one. Um, so some of you, we have Moodle, of course, which uh, I, I'm a big acronym nerd. I just learned this the other day. It stands for Modular Object Oriented Dynamic Learning Environment. So that's a final Jeopardy question if you've ever, if you've, if you've never seen one. Um, so it is an open source LMS, meaning that the, the, the program code is open to anyone. Uh, it provides a lot of the, the core, the tools that we use, uh, such as content creation of assignments and quizzes. Uh, the, the grading and assessment uh, framework and the course management uh, database. Uh, so with, with Moodle, we add in our, our, our state hosted uh, open agency called OpenLMS and they provide us with our instance of uh, hosting and support of, of, of Moodle. Uh, they are all, they offer if we expand or um, contract in our users and courses, they're able to expand that storage. They Any tools that we have, uh, such as Pearson, McGraw-Hill, um, uh, any any of the uh, third-party tools that they're responsible for the most part for impl implementing those, and any up updates and upgrades that we might have, um, such as the one that happened this weekend, up to 4.1. So, uh, Again, if we if we have if you there if there are videos that you might watch uh, on the faculty uh, resource page, uh, and they don't look the same as as what you might see, it's probably because they've upgraded the interface or changed some things around. Um, and so Moodle plus OpenLMS gives us what we know as my courses, which allows us to customize our branding and our theme uh, for 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 for, um, for Blue Ridge. So you may have used Moodle before, but it may look different. Uh, this is kind of what we have. Uh, I have no idea where that uh, blue finger guns came from. It's just a cool icon that showed up. So if you look at uh, the uh, the tab on your web browser, you'll see a blue thumb that looks just like that. Uh, so we have, thanks to Leah, we have an automated course uh, and user account creation process, and that's custom to us. And as well, if you teach any advanced manufacturing or um, or anything in uh, workforce development, you may see a custom template uh, where it comes pre-populated with with uh, modular graphics and uh, uh, and pre uh, kind of pre-populated stuff. So that's as technical as I'm going to get. You don't need to remember any of this. I just wanted to give you an, uh, kind of a, a story of how things got to be this way, and I will go and continue on with this. Okay, so beginning, let's let's start talk a little bit about navigating the interface. Uh, Again, a lot of you have uh, probably logged in uh, on several times, several occasions. If you haven't, that is a QR code that goes takes you to right to the front page of of my courses. Uh, a lot of you might go there through the main BlueRidge.edu web page, students tab, and so forth. Anyway, I would recommend getting getting a short shorter way of getting there, if, especially if we're going to do um, if we're going to log in every day and get get yourself a workflow that uh, that gets you there quicker. Um, so to begin with, I'll, I'll just run through this. You may, uh, again, you may be familiar with all this, but we have a site header at the top of the page. Uh, the blue logo will always take you back to the beginning, no matter how deep you are in, in, uh, in the course or uh, an assignment or settings, you can always go back that way. Um, these three things, the messages, the private chat for um, 
oh, I forgot to finish that sentence. When students can students can message you uh, privately this way, uh, the profile, this is where you set your picture and you, you can view all your earned badges and the announcements. I'll get to that in just a minute, the little bell. The admin gear, it's a contextual menu. It changes based on what, what tool you're in. Uh, this is a, a really handy tool to use if you've never used it. Uh, you can see when students have, have logged into your course. You can set up groups, access the gradebook, and uh, a whole bunch of other stuff that I, I can't, I don't have time to cover today. Um, a lot of good stuff on that header. So <clears throat> another very handy feature is the breadcrumb navigation. Uh, Again, it's a, it's just purely for your convenience and uh, to help you be stay oriented uh, within your course. If uh, if you want to go through, if you just want to climb out of one step, you can always go go back one step, um, such as going from three to four to two, so so forth. Um, course cards for every course that you teach, you will get one of these guys, and it will show. Uh, the uh, if you want to uh, highlight the star that's going to move that course up to the top uh, your profile if you have added it it will show there if there are if there's a co-instructor for your course there they're going to be more going to be more than that uh, of course the course name and course grade this is something that only the student will see uh, and uh, it's uh, it, it and there's one more uh, just below this, uh, if you look right there, there, there will be a progress meter, which may or, you may, may or not be part of the course. Um, but just so you know, for every activity that's uh, th that's within that course, they'll show it'll show the student how far along they are in completing that. Uh, the table of contents, also also known as modules, uh, it's a it should be fairly evident. It's on the left side of the screen. You have a chance to search for content for, by keyword, um, and the current module that you're you're on it will be highlighted. Okay, so let's go quickly into course add course content. Uh, for at the bottom of every module, you'll have an activity or add activity or resource button, and that will allow you to uh, add everything that you see under here such as uh, activity, activities and resources, assessments, and any external tools. So uh, you can also, if you have a PDF or a PowerPoint or a, a Word document or some, some fairly popular file format, you can actually just drag that directly into your course module and it will, it will upload it that way. So it's a, it's a convenient way to get, um, get the course and without having to add a file or, um, or, or go through this, this, to this menu. Um, okay, uh, quick, just give you some ideas about some collaboration and communication tools. That's a, that's a big thing, uh, staying in touch with your students and, uh, and having a presence and building a sense of community in, in your students, uh, in your course. Uh, of course, the biggest one is forums. That was a, that was a big upgrade and I'll touch on this a little bit, um, I'll be honest, Kevin is the is the expert in forums. There's four different types and they all have slightly different behaviors based on what you want to get out of them. Uh, but for any, any anything from course announcements to uh, if you're trying to get a dialogue going or a conversation, getting peers to talk to each other, uh, this is this is that's the number one tool to do that with. And you can they're, they're also grade, you can also grade them based on their replies. Uh, a questionnaire. This is not a an official uh, quiz, uh, but this is a good way to uh, administer surveys, polls, or questionnaires. Uh, this is not the official course uh, evaluation that you get that that comes up at um, at the end of the semester. But it's just something that if you wanted to get a, a an informal poll of, uh, of the opinions or any data from the from the students. Um, and of course, chat. That's a that's kind of a real time chat room for the synchronous communication. Uh, and use that as as you as you see fit. Uh, Wiki is a, it's a neat tool that you actually put this little microcosm in in your course where students can get together in a group. Uh, they can collaborate for to create content. They can share uh, documents and images and and kind of within their own little world there. And then they can come together and pre present on it on on a certain topic. So um, I encourage you just to kind of look at that and and see if there's a um, there's any places to use that. 
Um, course announcements, that was, that's not so much a tool that you would select from the menu, but at the top of the header, uh, next to next to the, your profile, that's where you can see your course announcements and any no notifications uh, for for sharing updates or deadlines or anything that's uh, anything that you want to post. Okay, um, assessment and grading. We'll go through this. Uh, we have uh, really two ways to get to to the grade book uh, through the admin gear, and then you can select um, view grade book uh, or the course dashboard. And I'm I'm going to go through that in just a minute uh, to show you the uh, the respondus uh, tool. Okay, here's a quick video from Kevin, um, and just kind of showing you. Uh, or actually, this is this is my video, and I'll show you kind of what happens here. Each of your courses in the LMS will have its own gradebook, which you can access by going to the individual courses dashboard. From there, you'll see the gradebook icon. The second way to get there is to go to the administration gear in the upper right hand corner and click on gradebook setup. Students also have a version of this link where they can get access to their course grades. Here's an example gradebook. The 2022 upgrade of my courses consolidated the gradebook from a row of tab choices into a single dropdown. In this menu, one can select how the gradebook is viewed, set up, as well as options for grading scales, letters, or importing, you know, export, exporting grades from an external source. For this tutorial, we will stick to only the main functions. Okay, so I hope that wasn't blurry for anyone, anyone else. I'm not, not sure what, what happened there, but it was not not uh, maybe it was something over the the um, resolution. Anyway, we'll, we will roll we'll roll with it. So uh, some of the big functions of the grade book, uh, we have the grader report, uh, the grade history of of what's uh, everything that's been submitted, uh, the overview of every assignment. It's a it's a really long, uh, just a, a long scroll. So just get ready to scroll over. So uh, you can look at it by individual student. Uh, or get a user report for everything that they've done and um, and uh, for their semester. So sorry for the typo, facilitate communicate. Um, so sorry for that typo there. Uh, you can set up, so you can manually add categories to assign the different weights. Uh, this, this is really important. It has to reflect what's in your syllabus at all times. And uh, this is a, a crucial part of the gradebook setup. And again, we'll, we'll help you um, if you need help set up, setting up your grade book, the first question we're going to ask is, let's see your syllabus, and we'll, we're going to go off what, what information is there. Uh, you can uh, customize feedback um, to your students. Uh, and so so look the, in the, the more menu, uh, you can modify grade letters and scales. Uh, you can import or export grades from a CSV file, which is uh, just a spreadsheet. And then you can even use audio and video feedback that can give a more personalized experience for the student. Okay, random blank slide I didn't mean to put in there. And so monitoring student progress. Uh, there's several ways, uh, you know, as, as a student completes assignments, they will, uh, like I mentioned to the course card earlier, they're going to have a, a progress bar that, of, of the amount of assignments they've completed. Uh, there is sometimes a, um, a uh, green check mark that will appear when they when they've completed all the part of assignments. Um, the early warning system that's what uh, Kirsten was referring to earlier with the Viso and Max Maxient. So uh, make sure you're using those and access logs so you can actually tell where a student has has logged in uh, when the last time they logged into the LMS through the admin menu is through the users. Um, and again, any questions I'll um, be happy to show, uh, give you a firsthand uh, demo of that. So again, here's our team. Uh, you've already already met most of us, and uh, with that, I'm, I'll uh, kind of wrap this presentation up, and I'll move into my next one. Uh, are there any questions that's kind of show up in the chat? Um, James, do you guys use Boost Theme? No. We use Snap Theme. Oh, uh, gotcha. Which is I, I, I just noticed yours is a lot cleaner than the one we use. Okay, gotcha. Oh, well, on behalf of uh, Lee, I'll say thank you. Yeah, it's it's twice it's, it's it's a lot better. Thank you. Yeah, so we 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 take a lot of time to to make sure that if we upgrade, uh, if we 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 sometimes we can opt into an upgrade, and sometimes that does, that upgrade doesn't come at the most opportune times, and 
it just it, sometimes they go south and um, we're lucky that we haven't been in a situation where we've been locked out of the LMS based on uh, the, the theme that we use or anything like that. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. I think we use the opposite theme because ours has looked that clean. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so I want to jump into Kevin's presentation and uh, he's, he's put together kind of some uh, new brand new t um, topics for the LMS. Um, I'm going to, so everyone can see that. Okay. Today's topics. Okay. So respondents, I'm going to be jumping around uh, to, from the PowerPoint back to the LMS. Uh, so Respondus is our newest proctoring software that we're implementing this year. Um, and so I'm going to show you real quick how you can add. The, it's important that you'll you'll add this block. If you plan on using any proctoring software for exams, uh, you'll need to add this block. So I'm going to, if you can still see my screen, I'm in my uh, CIS 110 class. Um, and down here, I'm going to go to course data. And if, you, if you're at your computer and you want to follow along, please feel free to do so um, and you can go ahead and take care of this now. So at the bottom of the, the table of contents, I'm going to go into my course dashboard. Um, so down here, there are some edit blocks. There's an edit block feature and you can add a block to that. Um, and I've already done this, but so if you see the add a block, you can click down in that drop down menu and this, since I already have Respondus, uh, it's not showing up in this menu, but if you have, if you go into that ad block, add the browser at that point, and then, uh, then you should be good to go. Now just make sure to turn editing off. And then you should be, should be good to go. Hey, Jamie, will you, can I, can I direct you for a second? Will you pop back over to the dashboard? I want folks to see once you go into Respondus and click on that dashboard link, once the Respondus Lockdown Browser block is there, this is your portal for assigning the Lockdown Browser or the monitor to any quizzes that you have in your course. So if you have quizzes and tests built, they will auto-populate in this list, and you can see the two syllabus confirmation quiz and the solo quiz are there. This is where you will turn it on. So you would click on that little down arrow. If Jamie, if you can do that for solo confirmation quiz, that's where you're going to click Settings. And then that's how you're going to turn on your lockdown browser, and then you would turn on your proctoring. Now, this makes a lot of sense if you're teaching online or hybrid. It doesn't make as much sense if you've got students in a in a blended class where they're going to take tests in the classroom. Um, but you can certainly use this. One of the things I love about this dashboard, and feel free to climb back out. That's as deep as we'll go for now with that. But one of the things I like is these tabs at the top of this dashboard menu, the Getting Started tab that you see there and the video tutorials tab, everything is built right into this. So you've actually got text that you can use for your with your students. They already, they write like a little script for you uh, that you can give to your students. It's really, see it says give instructions to students. Number two, they've got a document right there that you can click on and you can copy and paste and make that an announcement. So you can set this up really, really easily with your students. And again, we're here to help, but it's really straightforward if you wanna start playing around with that. Okay, I'm done. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, that was that was really helpful. That was uh, much more well spoken than I could have hacked through that one. <laughs> so, uh, again, forums and discussions, uh, big changes uh, with uh, with the new uh, the new forums. Um, kind of going through Kevin's presentation here. These are some screenshots that he provided. Um, go back to that. Okay, so this was kind of what we were just going through uh, with. With the lockdown browser. Let me go through. Okay, uh, discussion forums and grading. So uh, this is the the add an activity resource uh, menu that we looked at earlier. Um, you can go through and look at some of the types of of, of ratings that that he has. Um, so between. Uh, all you, you're going to have the teacher role for these. Um, so as I was saying earlier, these are the types of forums that you can choose. Uh, a single simple discussion uh, and each of these have has different slightly be behaviors and uh, how you can grade those uh, either through uh, just giving a direct point system grade or uh, you have a checklist, which is like a 
a, a let's say a rubric light, a diet rubric. Uh, it's a, it's a small it's a small just if you need uh, to know did they do it, was it on time, um, and did they did they were they able to press a keyboard key or something to that effect. Uh, so um, a rubric is a lot more in depth. So you maybe for forums, uh, you're just trying to kind of choose your own adventure with with how much um, how much you want to grade that. Um, so there are types and choices. Uh, so the forums online, if I select this, this actually takes you to a uh, one of Kevin's test courses where he has um, examples of all these, all the different types of forums. And I'm not sure if this is on the resource guide. Uh, we will put it on there if, uh, if, if not, so you can kind of get an example of, well, here's a question I have, uh, what forum would be the best? So we can kind of help help you walk through that. Yeah, we're going to get those loaded into the LMS resource guide so that you can go in and practice them and then decide if you want to try out one of those with your students. Uh, and some actually some services that we offer. Um, uh, Kevin is a, is a fantastic media uh, uh, producer, I guess, uh, or he, he, people uh, film, as you can see, here's here's one of our history uh, teachers. He just, he filmed a, a, a welcome video on his front porch and uh, he brings this in. He sends he sends us the file. We put it on a YouTube and then that's it. Uh, it can be as simple as that. We also have a mini studio, which uh, is actually in, in, is in patent building right next to uh, Kevin's office. So what's what's happened here? Uh, as you see that there's a webcam being filmed. He has a PowerPoint that's on top of that. And then that was converted into a YouTube video in which we would send. So you get a little more instructor presence in that and you get the chance to, um, you know, to, to actually do a lesson with that. So that's, uh, and the final one is, is kind of the whole enchilada. It's uh, the, there's in the, right next to IT uh, in the first floor of TED, there's a light board studio. And what you're seeing here is is real. There's there's no effects. Uh, it's a black background, and there's a there's a piece of glass, and the instructor can write on that. And there's a there's what you call the downstream key to where if they want to show their PowerPoint or if they want to show uh, an interactive um, a whiteboard where they can write on it while they're filming. Um, again, that's that's about the 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 shelf of my knowledge about this. It's a really cool feature. Um, and so I, if, if that's something that sounds uh, appealing to you, then yeah, let us know. Uh, we, we'll find the right thing for you, whatever your, whatever your teaching style is. Can I interrupt real quick, Jamie? Yeah. I want to mention, so I know, again, a lot of us teach online and we may not be close to campus. The most important thing is that you are showing who you are as an instructor, that they're seeing your face, they're hearing your voice, and that you're providing some kind of instructor presence through video or audio content. We love self-produced videos. We can give you tips and we can certainly give you some coaching and we can also help you upload them. So please know that whether you're on campus or off, your videos are welcome in your classes. We really want you to include those and we can help you get started with that. So uh, H5P, um, I could talk for hours about this. Um, I love this technology. It is truly transcendental uh it's it's fantastic so I, I i won't get into too much of that i know you're all uh, exhausted and probably saturated with information but this is a a drag and drop uh it's, it's just a screenshot but uh essentially it works uh just as it looks uh there's it, it attaches to the grade book um and if anybody wants to talk about h5p at any time i'll i will um I'll engage you in that conversation. So, so please let me know how how we can uh, how we can help with that. Um, there's a, there's a lot of different ways. Anything from from uh, a crossword puzzle up to a bingo game, up to this drag and drop to entire course presentations and interactive books. Uh, Jennifer was talking about using a micro learning sessions uh, to make to break it into smaller chunks. This is a good way to do that. There's a lot of ways to present your uh, content in a in a in a very short burst. Um, and it gets the student closer to the content as well. So I I want to try to sell that as much as I can. Um, <clears throat> let us help you create something. Um, okay, internal, what does that even say? Uh, internal collections. This is the question banks. Um, for the most part, your course, if you've already imported it into um, 
if you've already imported your course, you probably have all these question banks ready to go. Uh, if if not, if you're using a third party such as Engage or uh, a, a textbook manufacturer, we can put your um, we can put your question banks in your course for you. Um, content banks, it's it's a it's a manager of all the files that you were, were to bring into the course. It's uh, I mentioned earlier that you can always drag an assignment into the course. Uh, the content bank works as as kind of a vault uh, or a broom closet, whatever, however you want to see that. Um, and it, it'll it'll if you want to link something to your course, that's a kind of a, a one place that you can go and find it. A uh, folder is a good way of of just organizing multiple videos, multiple files. Uh, it can be organized according according to modules or topics or however you see that. Um, very handy thing to do. Uh, and that's an example right there. So there's, if you can see, there's a there's an arrow pointing to the right that kind of indicates that there's something happening uh, below that. And that's what it looks like when it's when it's completely expanded. And again, you can drop files into into the to the window, um, just like any other kind. So uh, we went through Respondus um, and talked a little bit about forums and discussions uh, and uh, the rich media, what, what, whatever you have to, um, if you want to self-produce your videos, just let us know. And internal collections is uh, just some of the tools that are that are in my courses that are that are fairly new. Um, any questions about this? Uh, got, where do I find the content bank? Okay, let me let me climb into a course real quick. So, uh, in so if I go into the, um, I'll go into my CIS class. Uh, so the content bank is going to be in the administration wheel. So if you click that and go to go to the bottom, you have that. It's going to be it's going to be living right there. And that's where you can find, I don't have a whole lot in there not, not right now, but um, so I hope that answers your question. So uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I, I know you've had a lot of information today and uh, I, again, uh, th hopefully this is just a springboard for, for more conversations that we have. So um, uh, just, just reach out to us, come, come find us and talk. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie, so much. Um, I just want to acknowledge for a minute, first of all, what an impossible task I gave Jamie when I said, take two presentations and try to smush them into one shorter presentation. And then second, I need to acknowledge how hard Jamie and the whole team have been working in the last several months over the summer, and then especially in these last few weeks to try to get everything ready for the fall. So I really appreciate your extra time and energy uh, this last several weeks, Jamie, and especially with helping our folks as they get more familiar with my courses. He's a fantastic one-on-one -on -one coach. He's coached me a lot, actually, um, because I'm always still learning too. And it's great to just have that person who you know you know you can reach out to if you have questions. So please do reach out to us. You're always welcome to email us directly at TLC at Blue Ridge. And if you send it to that whole group, one of us will get back to you and we'll reply all so that we can keep track of who's answering what and we're not sending you three answers at three different times and filling your inbox. Um, I want to wrap up. We are getting close to time, but I am going to start by asking you to put in the chat, or if you want to talk, that's fine too, um, a takeaway from something that you heard either from our opening session with our student services and college services folks, from Jennifer or for Jamie. I'm going to put a little pressure on you for a minute. Type something in the chat or get ready to share out loud if you want to share out loud. What is, what's a takeaway for you? I didn't know about the content bank. Thanks, Jamie. Yeah, that's a super resource because especially again, we think about sustainability and making sure we have access to our materials. You can put stuff there and then pull it into the places that it needs to go. Comments are coming in. So many ways to customize. Love that you're learning how to be interactive. Yeah. Kimberly, I definitely, Dr. Turk, 
That's Dr. Turk, right? Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, I, I think that you're going to like Respondus if you haven't used it before, but we're real happy to walk you through it. And we've got some tutorials um, that Respondus actually is hosting this week. They've got, they have one tomorrow and one on the 17th. I can shoot you that link in the chat and let you uh, choose from those if you're able to go to any of them. Um, I think they'd be worth your time. Are you saying I need to go ahead and switch? Uh, you will not have access to Proctor Track moving forward. It's gone. So we ended our contract. Yeah, we actually bought. It's it's really okay because it's still given as an option on there because I set it up for all the tests. Did you really? Okay. Well, then I need to follow up with Leah because it was supposed to come off on July thirty first. Okay. Nope, it's still there. Thank you, Doctor Turk. Sarah, do you guys still use Turn It In? Yes, we do. And we have a new second feature. Um, Safe Assign has left our open LMS contract. So replacing that is copy leaks. So faculty will get to choose between Turnitin and copy leaks if they want some sort of plagiarism detection. Yep, we have um, copy leaks now too. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They haven't provided much training yet, but I imagine we've been, us folks in these departments around the, the state have been kind of politely screaming about it. So we're hoping some training comes our way very soon. We don't have turn it in, unfortunately, but we do have um, copy links. Okay. Other takeaways? Love new tools that are going to be used with the online students. Library resources. I agree, Carol. And you know, you've got a great resource with Michelle too. So please reach out to Michelle at TCC. Yeah. I love this question, Eric. Do you want to unpack what you're saying here? You say it's not a question. You said be personal with students. You've gone back and forth with this over the years. Anything you want to share or unpack? Yeah, um, you know, I I guess I always had a mentality when I was in school of, you know, the the instructors were more of an authority in the classroom. And, you know, there's a there's a whole lot of, you know, shift from sage on the stage to guide on the side sort of mentality, um, you know, and I had, um, I really kind of drew a line, like I even set up a separate Facebook account, et cetera, to make sure that my professional was professional, my personal was personal, uh, particularly as I had, you know, infants and toddlers in my life, um, you know, they're now preteen and teen. <laughs> so, you know, over over time, I, you know, I mean, I had some students who was like, okay, well, once you're done with school, then you can be my friend on Facebook, right? I like you enough. And, you know, especially with the ages and the wide variety of ages. Um, that said, I'm also a, a registered BSA leader. So I'm part of, you know, that that particularly with as many high school age students as I see um, through CCP, et cetera, you know, I, I constantly have that mindset of, well, even my virtual office hours are technically in violation of youth protection training uh, and the BSA's guidelines for that when I don't have too deep leadership, meaning that I don't have two adults or two youth, you know, to provide that level of protection in a one-on-one -on -one meeting with someone who's under the age of 18 or actually under the age of 21, I believe is where their policy lands. So, you know, how personal, you know, do I get in terms of sharing my, my family life, et cetera, versus, you know, um, being accessible, et cetera, versus being that authority of the classroom. And, you know, again, there seems to be a constant shift in that dialogue over the, two decades plus of time that I've been <laughs> yeah. learning adapting, and, and doing. So I don't know if that muddied it or, or clarified it, but that's, it, that's it's, what's it's a complex question and we can't, we can't begin to get to an answer today, Eric. What I'm uh, heartened to hear is that we're thinking about this kind of thing, right? Our students do want to know that we're real people. Um, especially when we're teaching online, we owe it to our students to show who we are as people on some level and we need to maintain some professional boundaries and we need to do that in ways that feel comfortable and appropriate for who we are, what our lives look like, what our responsibilities are, et cetera. So that's a great conversation I'd love to continue to have with you. And I know that some of you may want to have those conversations with your lead faculty member, your supervisor, your mentors. Um, 
because there's not one answer to give to that. But I'm really glad to know you're thinking about it. And it is changing. It is changing. Yeah. I, I don't see more takeaways coming and I'm noticing the time. So what I am going to say is thank you very much for choosing to spend this time with us today. Uh, you're going to get an email from me thanking you for being on the call. And in that email is going to be a link to a set of uh, it's one Google document. I just shared it in the chat as well. It's got a ton of resources in there. You'll also get a quick link to that behavior assessment form that Kirsten mentioned. Um, and then I'll also send you a copy of the slideshow in PDF form uh, from our opening session so that you can click on any additional links or see those resources again. Jennifer, if you and Jamie, uh, if either of you want to share your slideshows with us, we're, I'm happy to send those along too. So you'll get that email tomorrow and that will follow up everything. I want to thank you for now. If you have any questions or need to stay on the call, please do. Otherwise, have a great start to your semester. Be in touch with us when you have questions when you want to check in. Take care.